now it's time for a little update on the James Webb Space Telescope. As I reported before, they got all the mirrors aligned. And this is a picture of the even illumination on those mirrors. That's actually a selfie. That's not just a bunch of white hexagons they stuck together to look like Webb. That is illumination coming off of the telescope that they're able to see. And this is the sort of images they're now creating. That's that star we showed you before. And now you can see background galaxies. Indeed, we can zoom in there and you can see those galaxies very clearly. You see the disks of the disk galaxies. You can see one is a little bit of an S shape. Let me point that one out here. Um, right here, this one has probably a bar across the center. Um, down here, a very bright disk galaxy. And then also each of these little faint smudges is a galaxy in the background of this, of this amazing, amazing image. Now, how does this compare to previous infrared telescopes? Well, the Spitzer Space Telescope was a very, very important telescope, did amazing research, mapped the sky. This is what the image looked like, and this is JWST. So the advancement here is really incredible. Um, it is performing like we, we thought it would. It's performing like we want it to perform. And it's really just, it's, it's, it's blowing me away. I find it amazing. Now, don't expect to get better resolution necessarily than Hubble was able to get. As you can see here, the Hubble Space Telescope resolution was about 0.1 arc second. It got a little bit better across the middle of the band here. But then in the infrared, the Hubble Space Telescope gets worse. It's, it's not a very big scope, only you know 2.6 meters. JWST starts out a little worse than Hubble right here in this part, but then rapidly continues to get just very, very sharp images, much sharper than Hubble was able to get in the infrared bands, and then finally gets a little worse. Now, you might wonder, what is resolution? What are you talking about? Well, it's the ability to tell two stars apart. How close can you pack two stars and still tell that they're different, that they're not the same star. So that angle in between, that angle called theta is what we're measuring. That's the resolution. And that's the equation for it. 1.22 times the wavelength you're measuring it in divided by the diameter of your primary mirror. So the bigger the mirror you have, the better the resolution will be. You want that angle to be small. And the longer the wavelength, the worse your re resolution is going to be. So observing in the infrared like JWST does makes the resolution worse. That's why we needed a great big mirror to get the sort of resolutions that we're getting out of it. Now, why does this happen? It's a sort of a trick of physics. When light is passed through a little hole, sort of the opening of a telescope, the light actually well, it, it diffracts. You get these the bending waves coming out of it, and you get this sort of airy disk pattern where you get a very bright spot in the middle and then concentric rings that die out and get fainter on the outside. Now, the bigger the hole is, the tinier the, the dot in the middle will be. And it's that dot in the middle that really lets you tell the two stars apart. So you can see that diffraction rings here. And there's the, the James Webb Space Telescope. Now you can see some little lines crossing here. Those are diffraction rings. You can also see some diffraction rings here in this spike, but that's not the diffraction limit of the telescope. So this telescope is providing very, very, very sharp images is really all you need to know out of that. Now here are the instruments on the web. Um, it is going to be able to observe a little bit in the visible, so you can get sort of yellowish orangish light all the way to red light, and then it gets into the infrared. So the JHKL bands are very common infrared bands to be taking images in, and these are the different cameras and spectro spectrographs that it will be able to use until you get to the much longer wavelengths down here. So. This is a new realm for us to be able to observe from in space. Um, some of these wavelengths can't even make it to the ground. The, the atmosphere blocks them out. So um, that's why we go to space on this. It's a, it's a very exciting, um, exciting instrument and we're just gonna hear more and more from it. 